Right, so we should have, it says Medieval Europe 500 to 1500 essay titles, and then the other one in slightly cursive font says Dr. Dave's Guide to Writing. And this is a very historical document. I created this document in 1997 when I first came to Bill Kent and taught this course. It's been changed a bit, but not so much, so we may notice a few strange things there as we go along. Okay. Do you all have the two documents? Everyone got that? Okay. Is there anyone missing? Hasn't come back yet? Can you check his or her seats to make sure they've got what they need? Though I guess I shall eventually put all these things on Moodle as well, so we have them all there in case you lose them. Let's begin with essay titles. As I explained last time, mentioned briefly today, you will be writing two essays for me this semester. The first one will be worth 20% of the final grade, and we'll see how you get on with your research methods, and I shall meet all of you in my office uh, to talk about your essay and give you constructive feedback, uh, criticism, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and the second essay will be worth 40% and will be, obviously, hopefully, uh, a better, more polished, more scholarly piece of work. Or maybe they're both fantastic and you'll get 60%, the full marks for all. That would be great if we could do that, but um, we'll see how we get on. Many of you are not historians or you're not familiar with the Middle Ages, so we may have some uh, things to iron out as we go along. And I'm also aware, of course, that every single teacher is completely different. What one person says, this is how you do it, you'll go into someone else's class, Evgenia's class or Ken's class or whatever, you do it like this, whatever. So you've got, if I give you as much feedback or as much ideas in advance of what I want, then it makes it a bit easier for you. So, for both essays, for first essay and second essay, you have a choice. You can, if you want, for both essays, choose to answer a question from my list here, David's titles. Okay. So here are eight questions about different topics uh, relating to uh, uh, European history or more specifically other parts of Europe, particular parts of Europe uh, from the Roman times down to the Renaissance. Okay. These are questions which uh, you can choose from me. So I'm giving you a question, you can choose one. Number five, what, is fe what was feudalism? Obviously a very short question there, but actually probably the most difficult one there. Don't think, oh great, three words, I can answer that, okay. Uh, that's actually more difficult or whatever. And then the one about Charlemagne, which is quite long or whatever, uh, is actually quite a nice one, I would say, and so on. Um, so one, you can choose. If, however, you don't like my questions, or you would prefer to write your essays on something more different that you'll find more interesting if I'm not covering your particular interests or you want to focus on something in particular, then you can come up with your own topic and question each time. Or you can choose one of mine and then the second essay you can choose your own. It's up to you. Okay? Um, but in case you're not inspired, in case you can't think what you'd like to do, in case you can't formulate a problem or a question or something, then you're uh, you're welcome to do two of mine. Okay, there's no, uh, there's no problem there, and there's no extra points for taking your own as opposed to doing mine. I'll treat each essay separately. Okay, so that's the first thing. You need to start thinking fairly soon. I would suggest about essay one because it says 18th of November. Okay, which might seem a long way, seven weeks away, but remember all this last minuteism and stuff that we talked about last time. I would recommend you start thinking about this soon. I might start pressing you in the next few weeks, even briefly asking what topics you might be doing and are you going to do mine and things like that. Okay? But you're all big boys and girls, so I'm not going to be sort of spoon feeding you. I'll be expecting you to, uh, uh, to, to get on with this to some extent yourselves. Okay, is that clear? Yes? Right. Requirements and research methods. Uh, what does it say down here? Okay, two essays, 18th of November and the 6th of January. That's the more flexible one we said. It's the end of the semester and so on. And we explain that stuff there. Second paragraph, 
Okay, you can type your essays, you can even write them by hand if you want. I haven't had a handwritten essay for many years, but I did have them originally. As long as your handwriting is fairly neat, uh, whatever, if your computer explodes or something, I can take handwritten, but I'm sure most of you will give them uh, typed. Essays should be between about three, 5,000 words range, okay, and it depends on font size, all sorts of stuff for pages, so use your uh, word count to, to answer that. Let's not get too hung up on the idea of kind of length, okay, the important thing is to write a good essay which is analytical, answers a question, uses evidence, and so on. If you do all those things, your essay will end up being more or less the right length. If you're missing something somewhere, the essay will become too short, that's my feeling about this, okay. And as it says here, you can choose my questions or your own, okay. Most importantly, you must use at least one primary original source in your essay. This is new. This was introduced yesterday afternoon by me, <laughs> which the, your predecessors in this course never did. Since we've spent most of the last hour, well, I've spent most of the last hour talking, you've spent most of the last hour listening to me about primary sources, documents, DNA, or whatever it was, okay, and we're going to read documents every week, I've decided that you must use, to some extent, the evidence of a primary source. Okay, lots of stuff in the library, lots of stuff online, okay, and obviously I can give you some help uh, along the way when you choose your topics. So talk to me about that. So some kind of use of a primary source where you're using it to support an argument or analysing it in some way. You must have a bibliography at the end, okay. Most importantly, any uh, direct quotations from a primary source or a secondary source, okay, you've got to give some way of referring to that, little bracket with a page number, a footnote and so on. We're not going to, I don't have a particular style that I'm going to say, you use the Chicago style rather than MLA, I'm not going to do that. But as long as as scholars you're using a consistent way of indicating where your evidence comes from, that's very important. And then there's a few words about plagiarism and so on that we've mentioned before. Start your research by consulting some of the works in the general bibliography. As I said last time and briefly today, the list of books here. If you're not familiar with the topic at all, if you're not sure uh, what it's all really about, if you're still deciding what to do, you might pick a chapter or half a chapter from this general list, choose one of these books. If the book's not there because I don't, Alp's got it, okay, and Ellis got the other one, uh, then uh, you can find it somewhere else. Another book you can find, okay, plenty there. If you have any problems, it says at the bottom, okay, understanding the question, finding, uh, taking the notes from the books, organising the essay, meeting the deadlines, whatever it is, okay, contact me by whatever method uh, you have and let me know what, uh, what the problem is and I can help. All right, so, uh, any questions here yet? Is that all clear, Oksana? Yeah, we can look at brief draft. I'm not a big fan of the sort of draft method. I know the philo my friends in philosophy, Bill and Sandrine and Simon, some of you are from philosophy, they, I think there's a very big thing there, do your drafts and move up and do and, uh, things like that. I don't want to keep reading the same thing. It's a bit boring, actually, isn't it? But um, uh, No, but, it, it, but I will work. I'm, I'm, I'm teasing. If, if, you, if you've got some ideas, if you've got a draft, you can come and see me. I won't sit down, read it thoroughly, and give you kind of uh, points for it. It's not, it's not organised into this uh, course. But uh, if you want to send me something by mail, and then I can send you by mail a, res a response, or we can meet in my office hours, and I can give you some, some feedback. You need to develop that or that, yeah. But it's not a kind of formalized thing like some instructors have. Um, just partly because I've never done that very much. I tried it once. It uh, wasn't uh, so successful for me anyway, but uh, maybe it has benefits. Any other questions for this? Now, how uh, any of you, and this is a point where you... Uh, you don't have to feel kind of ashamed or whatever. Uh, uh, hands up if you're a little bit uncertain about writing the essay, if you're not clear, if you're a bit nervous, if you think you're gonna, you don't know what to do and things like that. And as I said, if you're thinking, oh, I'm a bit worried about this essay, these essays, not sure what this guy wants or never done a history essay before or something like that. Any, anyone concerned or worried about that? which either means that you're all very confident or you don't want to put your hands up, one or the other, I think. Okay. Hey, Jim? Now, as I said, I, as long as you're consistent, that what I'm concerned with 
at this level particularly is essentially um, that you indicate where your information comes from. Whether you use you know, bracketed references, whether you use footnotes, what style you use is not so important to me. I will say, you, you know, you quote, you haven't told me where that quotation comes from, or this is actually kind of copied from somewhere, you need to put it in quotes or something like that, but the particular individual style is up to you, as long as it's consistent and it's there, okay, because that's, uh, there are hundreds of different styles of referencing uh, used in disciplines, different journals and things, so uh, there's no point in kind of only knowing one of these things, so it's up to you to, to do that. Anyone else got a question or anyone else want to? Okay. So, sorry? Well, it doesn't make a difference, double spaced or single spaced with the word. I had a friend, in fact, when I was doing my PhD, one of my best friends, he's now a big academic in Canada, and he was uh, finishing his PhD, and he'd written too much, and the Cambridge University had a limit to the number of words in your thesis. So he decided to print it all in very small font, and hopefully <laughs> they wouldn't notice, but he, I think he got caught, I'm not sure what happened, or you move a lot of it into an appendix and you could get away with it or something. So yeah, font size, double spacing, obviously with word count, it doesn't help. Look, yeah, okay, um, we need to work on this, okay, we need to work, as we were saying before, uh, we can work on drafts, as Oksana was saying, we can work on ideas, we can meet and sit together and talk for five minutes, 25 minutes, whatever it is, okay, which means don't leave things to the last minute, start planning, start preparing and putting things together. For me, 3,000 words is kind of nothing, okay, um, but then I'm just showing off. Um, but, um, but you've heard the way I talk, I don't stop talking, so I've probably spoken more than 3,000 words in the past two minutes or something. But um, we need to work on how you do the essay. And I, in my feeling for a scholarly essay for this kind of a level, I know we've got some undergraduates and some graduate students here, so as I said last week, I will be expecting slightly different things from you, but I'll be expecting quite good things from the minor people. Uh, we can work together on this, okay? Let's not, uh, let's not forget that point. This would, okay, Alp? I have one kind of concern. Uh -huh. Not concern, but I'm unclear about one thing, and that's the use of this primary source thing. Yeah, well, I'm a bit unclear about that, because I only invented it yesterday. Um, <laughs> but, so exactly what, uh, you're the kind of guinea pig group, the experimental group uh, for this idea. But, uh, um, it has to be an integral part. Uh, what, I'm, what I thought of here is that I knew that this would be a slight problem because it's not, I mean, it's not that I hadn't thought of it, uh, but that obviously each essay is different and it might be that however hard we search, we can't find something in English that relates to that topic or whatever it might be. Uh, so um, we'll, I'll work with you all on this and see how it goes, okay? You'll, need, you'll all need to speak to me uh, in class during the break, in office hours, whatever it might be, to show me what you're planning, to show me what you've done, to show me what you've found, and then we can be a bit flexible about this, and I'll give you some, some help on that as well. I mean, I know if you wanted to do something about intellectual history, which is one of your interests, or your big interest, obviously you could just, you could find a translation of Thomas Aquinas, you've read that anyway, and then it's a massive thing or whatever, oh, maybe you haven't, right? I don't know what philosophy department does, Varel, but... Um, um, but uh, you, could, uh, you, you could do that, obviously, whereas someone else choosing a different topic will say, well, you know, I, there's this little quotation here, that's about all I found. So we need to work with this together, and, and I'll, I'll help you along the way. Okay, Tamama? Anything else? Um, all right, I won't go through Dr. Dave's guide so much here. If I'd brought my guitar, I might have done that, but unfortunately we didn't have enough votes, though I've already had some complaints about the voting system and things. So, yeah. um, But this is just some key points, okay? How to research, uh, planning your essay is the other thing, and then putting your essay structure together, which is where we eventually reach those three or 4,000 words and so on. Kind of rules and points and things like that. And uh, I prefer, rather than to spend time now, uh, to work with you all in small groups or individually over the next few weeks so we can, we can do this together, okay? But have a read through that, see what you think. Okay, um, any more questions? Everything kind of clear or not as clear as it can be? Okay, Maria? Does the uh, sources are limited or how many? Uh, 
at least how many stories <sighs> Well, of course, this depends. Um, no, if I mean, well, again, I don't like to make too many at leasts. I mean, it, uh, it's like the word length and so on, because then people kind of just get focused on achieving that or whatever. I mean, there may be just one book in the library, for example, which is about your topic, but it's a very, very thick book or something like that. Or there could be 15 articles that you can have access to and so on. I, will give, I can give you some bibliography. For each of these questions, I have pre-prepared bibliography of sources. Uh, using one source is never enough because it gives one book by someone, uh, just gives that one person's viewpoint, that one person's interpretation of the question. Okay? You always need at least two sources to understand uh, the bigger perspective because historians are subjective in the same way that historical sources are subjective. So I would say minimum of two, but again, uh, it depends on what they are as well. The two articles is obviously a lot less reading than uh, one book, in a sense, but on the other hand, it depends what they contain and so on. And what you're trying to get is information and ideas and inspiration that will help you answer the question thoroughly. And one source may not be enough because it focuses on one question, one issue, rather than the bigger part of the uh, broader sc scope of the question thing. So again, something that we'll, we should uh, uh, look at together. Anyone else? No? Okay, Fatty. Uh, can it be considered um, like a research paper, uh, demographics or maps, any illustrations? Well, as long as they are, like with the primary source, as long as they are helping you to show a point. Okay. Occasionally, particularly undergraduate, first year undergraduate hijiv clauses, people might stick a few pictures at the end, and I finish reading the essay and they come across the pictures, but there's nothing telling me what they're there for. Picture of someone, it doesn't really mean anything. Okay. Uh, if, however, uh, a map, well, we've had this nice map there, I haven't even referred to it at all over the past hour, but if there's a map there which you, you think helps to explain something because it's something complicated or whatever it might be, or images from an archaeological source but you want to interpret that as part, then that's fine. Okay? Anything you think will help you prove your point and give the correct answer to the question or your answer to the question is, is fine. Yeah, no problem. Think about all this, maybe that's what I should suggest, we can, even, we can even create a forum on uh, Moodle, I suppose, on uh, how do we do this, what are we doing that, and then we can all kind of correspond uh, over time and so on. Um, we'll, um, we'll see how that goes uh, in the next few weeks. But I would recommend starting to think about this uh, as soon as possible. One other point I should say, um, if you've got your name down here, many of you have already put your name down, and uh, Oljan and Ejem have already bravely volunteered for next week, and we'll come to that in a minute. Uh, then, obviously, uh, I don't know, Ejem uh, wants to write an essay about the Germanic invasions, uh, wants to give her presentation on the Germanic invasions, or whatever it might be, uh, which is from this bibliography for next week. Then, uh, I might, if she said, I want to answer question number two, which is partly, at least, about the Germanic invasions, I might say, ooh, no, you need something different. Okay? Your presentation topic and your essay topics, two of them, uh, should not be too similar. We may have a little overlap here or there. That's not a big problem. But in terms of saying, I want to write my essay on, uh, it's gone now, 1066, English history, 1066, and I want to write about, uh, uh, do my presentation on that, I would probably say no, OK, because you're doubling up the work and so on. So you will be, for me, primarily doing three lots of research, presentation research and then the two essays. Okay? You need to talk to me uh, definitely to get, uh, if there is some danger of, of kind of overlap going on. Okay. Right. Um, now, I did also want us to go and visit the library today a little bit, if those of you who are not from Bill Kent before. So let's um, say a little bit more about next week then now. So here's more paper, very bad for the Amazon rainforests today. I better take one, haven't I? Uh, I must add to the, the font on the top here. I like to use different fonts, make it a little bit uh, interesting. I used to, on my old computer, when I taught this course last time, I had, I had downloaded uh, 
rustic capitals. It's actually a font version of, a, uh, of an old Roman script. But then when they changed my computer course, that font disappeared, and I couldn't find it again. So this is something called something like Funny Roman or something like that, but it's not actually uh, a, a genuine historical uh, uh, script here. Okay, so next week we're going to look at the beginning of a process that takes us to something, takes us from something like this, okay, which is uh, the Roman Empire um, as it was expanding during the first century AD, and how we end up with something a little bit more like this, which is lots of separate kingdoms, largely, okay. Uh, sometimes uh, competing, uh, and many of these kingdoms we can see beginning to appear like modern countries, not all the way. We haven't quite got Spain yet here and so on, of course, uh, and Germany and all these areas are uh, a long way away from emerging from what was sometimes called the Holy Roman Empire and, and things like that, but where and Italy uh, doesn't have a political unity or whatever, but something here looks a little bit more familiar to us than what we uh, see when we look at this uh, map here. So we're going to be looking at kind of this a little bit and the later version of this. We're going to be thinking about uh, the late Roman Empire, uh, the main events that leads to uh, what's sometimes called by, as it says here, Edward Gibbon, old uh, uh, kind of writer, historian, whatever you want to call him, he called it the decline and fall of the Roman Empire. And the question there is, does that mean anything? Did the Roman Empire really decline and fall? Did it just change? Okay. How do we interpret uh, this period where we move from the Roman period to what we call the Middle Ages and what do we mean by all that? There's questions there, general questions we haven't looked at yet. Uh, but something happened uh, throughout the Roman world which led to what becomes the Byzantine Empire, which some of you are studying with my colleague Evgenia, and on the other hand leads to uh, Germanic kingdoms, uh, the Franks, uh, Merovingian Franks, uh, the Ostrogoths in Italy, something rather different. Uh, or how do we interpret this? What does it mean? And what did it mean for the people then? Okay? People then didn't think that Rome had gone. They thought they were Romans, but they're not Romans by our standards, or at least by the standards of Julius Caesar, but maybe they, they were, and these questions. So we need to look at all these issues here. So we're going to look at the sort of late Roman society in politics and change, and separately we're going to look at these Germanic peoples, where they're coming from, who they were, and so on. Okay, so it's a kind of background thing. We're not in the Middle Ages yet. We're in the prelude to the Middle Ages, if that's not a, uh, a rather um, uh, sort of uh, loaded and, and, and judgmental way of putting it. And what you've got here are a list of books from the library with the call numbers. Very uh, generous, uh, giving you the call numbers as well. You're all big boys and girls. You could go and search the catalogue and find the books yourselves, but I've given you the call numbers here. Uh, and what I suggest you do is... Um, particularly if you're doing the presentations. Now, there's Ed German. Where's uh, old John? Uh, yeah, OK, the two of you. Uh, here are some useful books. If you look in the same parts of the library, you may find some other books that I haven't included here relating to uh, the late Roman world or the Germanic peoples as well. This is not a complete list, and it's not the only books you should be looking at. You can do some of your uh, work as well. For the rest of you, as I said last time, if you want to go in the library and do a little bit of preparatory reading, that's good, okay? Otherwise, the main thing you must be doing is reading Tacitus's Germania and be ready to come and discuss that in class. Now, normally in the past, I used to make many, many photocopies and go to the photocopy room and get them all stapled, and then I'd forget and it would be a mad panic at the, at the end. Then I thought, ah, why don't we put it all on Moodle? Why don't we just have all the things and find the versions of these texts, if they're there, uh, on Moodle? So for next time, you all need to be definitely enrolled onto Moodle, because then you can go here, and hopefully this works, and there it takes us to Fordham University's um, Historical Sources, their Medieval History section. Uh, it's pre-medieval, of course, and here is a, a slightly older translation of um, 
it's called that in Germany, but it means Germania. Germany obviously implies the modern state, so let's uh, use the word Germania, written by Tacitus, who was uh, an important uh, early Roman historian and writer and so on. Read that, and then be ready to come along and comment on that text, both in terms of what it tells us, and in terms of what it tells us about Tacitus and what he's trying to do. Because one of the big messages I want us to kind of get this semester is historical sources very often tell lies. They're trying, they're there to trick us. They're there to make us, or not you and me, but the original readers, the people 2,000 years ago or 1,000 years ago, they're there to convince those people of something that perhaps wasn't necessarily true. Okay? And it may seem obvious to us, it may not seem obvious. So read all historical documents like a, um, a police detective interviewing possible suspects. Assume that they're lying. Don't always assume that they're telling the truth, okay? Otherwise, you could be in rather deep methodological waters, okay? I want to talk about the Middle Ages as well, but we've done all that history stuff. So, tell you what we'll do now. It's now just coming up just after three o'clock. Uh, so, um, we might, uh, firstly, hands up those of you who are uh, new to Bill Kent. We did this the other day, okay? Keep your hands up. Uh, take your hand down if you're new to Bill Kent, but you, keep them up at the moment, I haven't finished the sentence. If you're new to Bill Kent, but you, you're not particularly interested in going to the library and having a quick half an hour in the library. If you want to come with me to the library, I'm offering to take some of you, or even all of you, to have a quick look at the history bits in the library and show you where the books might be and say a few other things. And you can see all the people in the library saying, oh, David Bay, Hodgham, and all that. Um, but uh, um, if you want to come have a quick... Sorry, if you're interested in coming for a quick tour of the library, not a full thing, not my kind of uh, speaking to ambassadors thing, but more for historians, here are the books, here's a few points of advice. Keep your hands up. If you're not even new to Bill Kent, if you're an old Bill Kent, but you'd like to see a bit about the history books, put your hands up as well. So, um, is that hands that I want to? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, that's enough. So let's do that then. The rest of you who feel confident with Bill Kent Library uh, and the history course and so on, uh, you, you can all finish an hour earlier than you, half an hour earlier than you're expecting. Um, I need to speak now very quickly to Old Jan and Ed Jem because most importantly they are my boys and girls for next week of course we need to know what they're doing uh, the rest of you you can either go or wait around till I'm ready and then we'll walk over to the library together Friday, right? <coughs> hmm? Friday.